I'm Ted Berg for SNY.TV, and today on Know Your Enemy, presented by Pepsi Max, we're heading north of the border as the Mets take on Toronto in interleague play. Joining us to talk about the Blue Jays is Andrew Stoughton from The Score and their Jays blog, DrunkJaysFans.com. Stoughton, how are you? Doing great, man. All right, let's talk about the Blue Jays sort of sitting in a similar position to the Mets, uh, third place in the division, but in that second wild card spot for whatever that's worth in mid-May. Uh, we tend to talk about one good thing about each team here, and one positive sign for the Blue Jays has to be that Jose Bautista is starting to hit. Yeah, absolutely. He struggled a lot. I mean, he was still walking, but he struggled a lot at the start of the year. Uh, it just didn't seem like he had his timing right. He was sort of he wasn't scoring the ball up. He was, you know, there was a lot of like ridiculously high pop flies that he kept hitting, and and just just wasn't on pitches the way that he, we've seen him over the last couple of years. And it started to come around. He's hit a couple. This absolute laser beams out to uh, left field. And he's got a 975 OPS in May, despite a 189 batting average on balls in play this month. So that's got to be a good sign. We're we're crossing our fingers. You know, it's looked it's looked good the last couple of weeks for sure. Uh, on the flip side of things for the Blue Jays, most of the other guys in the lineup really aren't hitting to so much. They've got four guys, four regulars with on base percentages below 300. Yeah, they just sent Adam Lynn down after two years of uh, of you know sub 300 on base percentage. He's he's not been good since his 2009 All Star year season. Uh, you know, Colby Rasmus is a mess. Actually, uh, Drew, who's one of the guys I write the blog with, was down at batting practice and it was like it was pathetic. He said the, from Rasmus, he must have been working on something, but he's he's not together. Eric Thames has been has not been. You know, I don't think he's a special bat anyway, but he's uh, he's not looked great uh, all throughout the lineup. There are guys who are underperforming. Which is kind of a nice thing because we think they'll come around, but some of them uh, we're starting to worry. Well, the pitchers have picked up a lot of the slack this season. Let's talk about the guys going in this series. Ricky Romero, tonight's starter, a good lefty, but coming off kind of a rough start. Yeah, he hasn't really been himself yet this year, and I think uh, I, I guess a, it's a theme that goes all the way across the Jays team. But we think we're we're still have better things to see from Ricky Romero. Uh, the last couple, he's struggled with his command a bit, and we just we know he's been better. He's a, he's good in that he can when he sort of falls out of his mechanics, he can get back into the right rhythm and into the right uh, delivery, and and can still you know finish out games and and you know pitch a lot of innings for the team, which is good. But but yeah, he hasn't really had his stuff this year. And Morrow, tomorrow's starter is sort of an interesting guy in that. He spent the last two years underperforming his peripheral stats, and this year, at least at the beginning of the year, he's outperforming them. Yeah, he's been really interesting this year because he sort of started in the first couple of games trying not to be the, the strikeout pitcher that, that we all have sort of seen the last couple of years because I think he wanted to pitch more efficiently. He was trying to induce more contact, get more ground balls. Uh, and it worked. He was getting ground balls, but he wasn't, you know, as effective a pitcher. Uh, so he's sort of come back around to the notion that, you know what, I I have amazing stuff that I can blow guys away with. And so if I only pitch six innings and, and rack up 10, 11 strikeouts, that's fine. So I think that's what we can continue to expect from Brandon Morrow. You've got to tell me about Sunday's starter, Henderson Alvarez. Guy's 22 years old. He's striking out 2.5 hitters per nine innings, but he's got a 2.62 ERA. Is this the 1890s here? <laughs> it's really weird and you know Jays fans are really excited about him we always are kind of you know telling them you know settle down a little bit because that strikeout rate just can't you know continue to play the way it has so far but he's been fantastic he's got a lot of sync on his fastball he gets so many ground balls and the Jays have been really active with shifting this year uh, so their defense has, has really been helping him out and that's what they've sort of been doing just letting him pitch to contact and it's worked out well so far and how has their bullpen been without Frank Francisco and John Roush. <laughs> uh, it, it struggled a little bit at first. Sergio Santos came in the offseason uh, via trade and uh, struggled and then went on the DL. The, they experimented with uh, Francisco Cordero as the closer, which was not such a good idea, but they seem to have locked things down. Casey Jansen is, uh, has now taken over the closer role until Santos is back, and uh, he's pitched three clean ninths uh, since taking over the role and has, has looked terrific. Andrew, thanks so much. Thank you. Remember, for all the latest on the Mets, check out MetsBlog.com, TedQuarters.net, and SNY.TV.